Hi, it's Peter again. Uh, this video is just going to be a quick one, hopefully, just to sort of answer some of the frequently asked questions. People who are just getting um, AVX or EVA set up and want to be able to, you know, text people and make calls and have it, you know, recognize their contacts and do it quickly without having to struggle with the voice recognition and names and things like that. So, first thing that you want to do is uh, if you go into your settings, you'll see. Your settings are displayed. Tap on a category to make changes. One of the things you may notice here that I've got the text is white there for AVX, and by default it's blue, but if you go into the interface section you can change Android's text there to white, and um, makes it easier to read if you prefer um, the high contrast setting. So the, what I want to show you here is you go to contacts and groups, you'll see there's an option there, set default group of contacts. So um, if you come in here, you'll see your groups. The groups are displayed. I'll just stop the text there. You'll see your groups, and by default, um, my contacts is the one that'll probably on your be on your phone, and probably be the one that's selected as default. Now, depending on how your phone's configured, that may not be the case. And whatever contacts are in that group are the ones that AVX or EVA is going to be looking at. Now, if you want to check what contacts um, it's looking at, you'll say display my contacts. So the process here is that you'll say display my contacts, see if it's seeing the contacts that exist on your phone, and if not, you'll come in here and look at your uh, groups and ch change which is the default, or if you actually tap on the default, that'll make it not the default, and then it won't even use the group, it'll just dis display all of your contacts. Um, but ultimately, you need to get it so when you say display my contacts, that it will see the list of contacts that you want it to work with. So let me show you that now, because I've already got it selected correctly here. Yes, Pete. Display my contacts. I have listed the contacts you currently have defined. Okay, so here it's listing all the contacts that I have, and if you get to that point, then you've selected the correct group, and you can go from there, okay? Now the next thing you want to do is when you're calling somebody or texting somebody, you're probably going to say call and their first name or text and their first name. That's the quickest way to do it because the voice recognition is going to have trouble with, with difficult last names and why fight it when you can just use their first name or you can use a nickname. And there's cases like this, so for example here I've got five different records for Bob and they're all different people, well two of them are the same person, but what you can do here is you can slide left and right on somebody's name so if you just slide that, you'll see it changes that to blank, and you slide it again, it changes it to ignored, and slide it again, it changes to priority. You can slide left and right, and it, and it toggles through those three different modes. So if somebody is blank, it's just a regular contact. If somebody is set to ignored, it means it won't, it won't even bother um, loading that person's um, record into memory when it it looks at what names that you're going to be referring to when you're making a call or texting or emailing somebody. Okay, So if you have multiple Bobs or multiple other people and you're never going to be texting or calling certain ones, then the best thing to do is just slide on them, change them to ignored, and then you can use that first name and it'll, it won't actually prompt you and say which one do you want. It'll go directly to the one that's not ignored. And in the case of setting somebody to priority, that means um, if you have your text messages held, for some reason, maybe you're you know busy working during the day or something like that, and you don't want it to be reading out your text messages. If you change it to priority and a text message from that person comes in, that'll kind of jump the, the fact that the text messages are, are being held, and it'll read the text message from that person anyway. So maybe it's it's your spouse, or maybe it's um, your boss, or somebody important business contact that you're working with that day or whatever, and, and you're expecting text messages from them, and you, you want to have all your other ones held and not read. You can just set it up so it reads those ones from that person, okay? So the next thing you might want to do, say for example you've got your spouse and you want to use like a pet name with them, and I've got like a dummy contact set up here, and just called uh, John Smith here. So if I tap on John Smith, details for John Smith are as follows. It shows the number there. Name. It's going to read it out, and and uh, say for example um, I want to assign a nickname to John and um, maybe I'll call him Sparky or something like that. So what you do is once you've selected it, you just say this. And there's a couple of different ways of doing this, but the quickest way is um, just to say change his nickname. Yes, Pete. Change his nickname. 
What is John Smith's new nickname? Sparky. Select the item you would like for the nickname. John Smith has been successfully updated. Okay, so that's got his nickname. So now I could actually say display Sparky and it should show him. Yes, Peter. Display Sparky. Details for John Smith are as follows. Okay, it's name. Gonna, gonna read that out. But anyway, so the, now, now it recognizes John Smith as Sparky. So I could say display John, and if there was more than one John, which actually there was, um, it, it would ask me which John do you want to um, look at, and I'd have to tap on the right one. But now because I'm using a nickname, I can just say display Sparky. So in the case of, say, if you're your spouse, you tap on your wife's record and you say change her nickname, and it'll ask you what you want that to be, and you just say my wife. And so the next time you say display my wife, it'll show her record. And likewise, if you say call my wife or text my wife or email my wife, it's going to use that record directly. So that's just a much quicker way of uh, setting up your contacts and that. So um, just just to basically shortcut, instead of trying to use everybody's last names, which, with like I say, with the voice recognition and tricky last names, this is the much better way of doing it, either eliminating multiples of people's first names or assigning nicknames to people and then you'll be able to call or text or email them uh, just that way. Okay, so the next thing that you may want to do just, just for kicks and giggles here is you see it's referring to me as Peter all the time which is whatever name that you gave it when you first uh, went through the setup process but you can um, have pet names, other names that it calls you by. So if you say this Yes, Peter. Display my pet names. Your pet names are displayed. Swipe right or left to decrease or increase the frequency at which they are used. So see, I've got four other ones there. Sir, Boss, Pete, and Captain. And uh, you can tap on the item there to add a new, ne a new pet name. And then you slide left and right on there to choose how frequently that pet name is used. Um, so you have medium, high, and low. And that means, you know, when you press the speak button and it says, you know, yes, Peter, or whatever, it will alternate in and put throw some of those in there just to keep it from being sort of a little bit boring um, or a little bit monotonous, I should say, or repetitive is probably a better word. Um, then the other thing I want to show you quickly is the replacement word function. I think I've shown this in an older video, but certain people's names, you may have somebody who maybe their name is Kaylee or something like that, and you want to be able to call them by their name, um, but the voice recognition is always coming back with the wrong spelling. So what you can do, and I'll show you how I have this set up right now. Yes, Peter. Display my replacement words. The list of your replacement words is displayed. Okay, so you see here, I've got five different entries there, and it's basically saying, like the second one there, oldest is replaced by August. So if the voice recognition comes back and thinks that I said oldest, it's going to replace it by August. And that was a common problem when I was first using it. I would say, um, you know, schedule lunch on August 15th at 5 p.m. and it would come back as oldest 15th. So now if it does that, um, when that word oldest comes back from the voice recognition, it'll replace it with the word August, and then my schedule will work, okay? And you can do do it, uh, you can do a phrase as well, like this last one here. Um, say if it's a place name or something like that, and then this place name called Onaway, and uh, the voice recognition always comes back with, it split into three different words, on our way. You can actually make that phrase um, to be replaced as a single word. And how you do this, and probably the best thing to do is uh, open the keyboard when you do this, and uh, we'll see see about the sequence here. So you say you want to create a new replacement word, and I'll I'll make it like a name here. So I'll replace Kaylee with Kaylee with a different spelling, um, or maybe uh, let's say let's do like uh, Crystal with Crystal with a different spelling. Yes, Peter. Create a new replacement word. Please say or spell the word you want to have replaced. Crystal. Please choose the word you want to have replaced. 
Okay, so see what's happened here is it comes back with four different spellings and that's basically what Google's going to come back with, right? And you see none of those has an H in the spelling, but say for example I have a good friend named Crystal and she always has an H in, in the spelling of her name and it never comes back with that match. So anytime I'm going to say something like this, you know, call Crystal or whatever, it's going to come back with four different options most likely and they're going to be these ones here and not, not the one with the H in it. You know, I could create a nickname for Crystal and put it as one of those and um, then it would match on that call but that's probably not the neatest way of doing it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tap on the first one and I'm going to actually make that a replacement word to put the H in there for me. Okay, So probably there's a couple ways of doing it. When I tap on this it's going to ask me to say the other word. Now, obviously I can't just say it because it's going to come back with one of these. I actually have to spell it or I have to use the keyboard to do it. So I'll try, I'll try doing it um, with well, I'll show you how to do it with the keyboard here. So if I open up the keyboard, and now I scroll back up and tap on that first one, it should keep the process going, but I'll be able to use the keyboard to reply. So it's asking me to spell the word I want to replace it with, and if I just type in here, and I hit enter or hit done, it's choose the word that you want to replace it with so it's recognize it and so it's created that replacement word. Now I can close the keyboard and I can say display my re replacement words Yes, Pete. display my replacement words the list of your replacement words is displayed so you see there's the last one crystal is replaced by crystal so now if I want to say uh, let's try this Yes, Pete. Text Crystal. New message to Crystal Rogers. Go ahead. Cancel. I have cancelled this text message. So I'm not sure if you... Yes, Peter. In case you haven't already gathered, you can tap on the speak button when it's listening for you to cancel that process. So as you can see there, I'm not sure if you caught it, when the, when the responses came back from voice recognition, there was four responses there, and none of them had the H in it, but you see it automatically replaced the first one and put the H in there for me, and it's actually matched my friend there um, automatically, so it's basically ready to go. So I mean, that was a perfect example of how to use a replacement word um, to sort of trick the Google voice recognition into doing what you want it to do. Okay, so that's just a couple of uh, neat things to show you there how to uh, get things working smoothly and of course now um, if you have a, the Galaxy S3 phone or one of the others running Android 4.1 and you've uh, set it up to use the offline um, voice recognition it's kind of neat now because if you're in the car and you're driving and you don't you don't obviously you don't have a Wi-Fi connection in and if you're out of range um, or you don't have a data a data signal or you've got your mobile broadband turned off because you don't want to use that or whatever in the car, you can still use the offline recognition right now and that will work and you'll be able to actually text people and reply to text, you'll be able to call people all using your voice without um, having a data um, data connected or just using the offline voice recognition. So those couple of things there um, and then probably the next thing you're probably going to be doing is you know switch, switching, jumping in your car, switching into car mode and it's probably going to start reading Facebook messages now when I do that. But let's say your screen is off and I've got it set so you can wave your hand in front of the screen here and uh, it'll activate. Yes, Peter. Text Crystal. New message to Crystal Rogers. Go ahead. Cancel. I have cancelled this text message. Okay. Switch out of car mode. So you can see how easy that is. You switch into car mode, put your, your phone up on your little holder and your dash or whatever. I actually have Velcro on the back of mine um, and some little Velcro on my dash. 
which makes it real easy. Just tap it to my dash there, switch it into car mode, screens off, driving along, wave your hand in front of it, comes forward, say the person's name to text them or call them, and away you go. And you don't, like I said, you don't even need a, an internet connection to do that anymore if you have the offline voice recognition working. So anyway, I'm going to end this video now and hopefully uh, you've enjoyed that. Thanks.